In addition to having just an interest in reptiles myself, I also teach college-level biology. Uh, I frequently bring animals into the classroom and allow them to be passed around in the class. So I'm interested in animals that are easy to interact with for, for everybody. And this is the crested gecko. Crested geckos come from the islands of New Caledonia, which are kind of temperate, humid islands um, over by Papua New Guinea. These crested geckos have a number of, of big advantages over almost any other kind of reptile you're going to encounter. Now, all the reptiles that I'm going to talk about are relatively affordable, um, both in the purchase price of the animal, they're going to be relatively easy to find on the market, and their housing is going to be relatively easy to provide for them. These are very, very easy geckos to take care of, almost like having a house plant. Uh, I do find, though, of all of the reptiles that we're going to talk about today, this is the one that I'm the most nervous to hand around to children, for example. These geckos can drop their tail if they become overly stressed, and it won't grow back. And they do just fine without it. I just think that it's a pretty little tail, semi-prehensile, which helps them hold on, and they use it as a break when they're jumping, because these are a leaping gecko, which is one other important thing to add. When they are handled, they can possibly leap into the air, and you're going to want to check when you originally buy your gecko just to see what its temperament's like. Some are very hyper. This one's very, very mellow. Um, but they are a wonderful choice of a pet for almost anyone who thinks they might like to have a reptile. Leopard geckos are a more terrestrial gecko. These geckos live in the desert. That doesn't mean that they like it extremely dry. In fact, you'll see a lot of leopard geckos will lose toes because people keep them on a really dry substrate. They need moisture, especially when they're shedding. And all of the animals we're going to talk about today shed their skin. And around that time of shedding, it's always important that they have adequate humidity. Now these geckos uh, are a little less fragile than, than the crested geckos. They too can drop their tails. This one will regrow, but they're maybe a little less likely to do so. Uh, they store a lot of fat in that tail and so they're more reluctant to drop it. They kind of need it. Uh, leopard geckos are not prone to jumping like the crested geckos are. This one's not quite fully grown. This would be a juvenile leopard gecko. This is a bearded dragon. They are possibly the best pet reptile there is. The most fun. I think as a pet goes, these guys are like a little reptile puppy. They're big enough to handle a little bit of rough handling from children sometimes. They're very, very laid back, non-aggressive. They will spend time with you. You can watch a movie, stick them on your shoulder, walk around. They will stick with you the whole time. In my classroom, sometimes I will stick him at the front and he will just sit there on a table for an hour or two and just watch the class. He's amazing. I'll tell you the downsides to a bearded dragon versus the other lizards we've talked about. The big thing is going to be cost. The upfront cost of these guys is going to be similar to the crested gecko or the leopard gecko, but the enclosure and feeding are going to be considerably more expensive. Even considering that higher cost compared to having a dog or a cat, these are very, very affordable, very rewarding, a great family pet, and I highly recommend them to anybody who's really committed to wanting a great reptile. Anyone who doesn't have a problem with snakes or a problem with feeding rodents to animals. I want to start with this one. This is going to be the smallest snake I'm going to talk about today, and this is a Kenyan sand boa. These are from the desert and they live underneath the sand. You can see their eyes are up on top of their head, and they pop out and grab little things that happen to walk by, and that's their main way of eating. Because of the way that these little boas feed, they are probably the most likely to bite you at some point, only because they're gonna mistake you for their food. However, their mouths are very small, their bite would be totally non-serious, and usually as long as you warn them that you're coming and that you're not something to eat, they're not gonna be aggressive at all towards you. 
they're actually a very small species of boa with big females only getting to be about two feet long. And most are going to be quite a bit smaller than that. Sand boas are an excellent choice of small, personable snakes. Of all reptiles, this may be my number one recommendation. Again, if you don't have a problem with snakes and you don't have a problem with feeding rodents to animals. This is a gopher snake, and I don't want to talk specifically about gopher snakes, but I want to talk about these medium-sized North American colubrid snakes. And the colubrids are going to be these non-boa, non-python, medium-sized snakes. Probably the best one you're going to find and the most readily available is the corn snake. This is a type of rat snake and I would recommend most any kind of rat snake. They are going to be excellent pets. They get to be a reasonable size, somewhere between four and six feet. This individual is about four to four and a half feet long. So a six foot snake is going to be somewhat larger than this. As handling goes, these are going to be one of the most fun pets you can have. They're very personable, they're large enough to handle a little bit of rough handling from children. They're very, very personable and generally very calm, good, consistent feeders most often, and so they make excellent pets. This is the ball python, and I think as relatively large snakes go, this is absolutely the best pet snake. These are definitely large enough to handle a little bit of rough, ha rough handling from children, but they're still small enough to be manageable and not dangerous. Ball pythons are the smallest python in Africa. This is a male, and he is about as big as males tend to get, three to four feet somewhere in there. Females are going to be larger, they can get up to four or five feet, even up to six feet in some rare cases, but that is still a very, very manageable snake. Um, but yet they're large enough to be a lot of fun to play with and they can be kind of impressive if you're going to be holding them up in front of large groups. A snake this size is impressive enough to, to get a good reaction out of kids and that's a lot of fun. They are, however, very gentle, generally very easy to work with. I would make sure that you get a calm individual when you pick one out. If you get one that's snapping at you as a baby, it could be potentially more aggressive as an adult. In general, though, these snakes are very mellow, very, very personable, very easy to handle.